The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he was raised from the dead, Jesus appeared to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias and indicated the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to Peter, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. On this last day of Easter, our readings give us a good exhortation as to how we should live our lives as we approach the end of our lives. So in the first reading from Acts chapter 28, we're getting toward the end of St. Paul's life. He was accused in Jerusalem by some Jews, and he, being a Roman citizen, didn't want to be tried in that setting or context, so he appealed to be tried in the imperial courts in Rome, which was his right. So after this long journey, now he's in Rome, he's in jail, awaiting trial. But what does he do as he's awaiting trial? He doesn't fall into any kind of despair or inactivity. Rather, he's very productive. He is fervent to the end. He's serving Christ, his Savior, even in his captivity, in his old age, in his suffering. Actually, this is where he writes his famous captivity letters while he's in jail. A letter to the Ephesians, letter to the Philippians, the Colossians, and then his letter to Philemon. Four letters he writes as he's sitting in jail. Plus, he's welcoming all who come to visit him. He was given that kind of freedom. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So there's an example. In our suffering, as we get older, in our declining years, still we should be very, very fervent and active in proclaiming Christ. We then turn to the gospel, and we're at the end of John's gospel, chapter 21, and we hear about Jesus interacting after his resurrection with Peter and John. And he tells Peter what's going to be happening in his life toward the end, that he will stretch out his hands and Someone will take him to where he'd rather not go, indicating the kind of death he would suffer, martyrdom. But what does Peter do? He's more active. He's out preaching and teaching. And finally, under Emperor Nero, who deliberately sets a fire in Rome in order to blame the Christians, Peter is caught in this. He's uh, accused, and ultimately he is crucified, but because he's so fervent for his faith, he doesn't consider himself worthy to die the same way that Jesus did, so he asks to be crucified upside down. He's granted that, and that's how he suffers his martyrdom. But right to the end, fervent, fervent, fervent. We then hear about John, because Peter is asking, well, what about John, who is walking behind him? Jesus says to Peter, well, what is that to you? I've got special plans for John. John lived several more decades as a very old man, but he also suffered because he was exiled into the island of Patmos, which was not a good way to live, but he persevered. But it was in that exile, in that suffering, that he had this great vision 
of being caught up into heaven on the Lord's day. And then he writes his famous book of Revelation, outlining all of that. Plus, he writes his three letters. So he is very active to the very end as well. But it's an exhortation to us as we continue in our lives. Let us continue to increase in our passion and fervor to proclaim the good news, always being willing to give an answer for the hope that is within us to our dying day. Let us pray.